Hello, everybody, and welcome to Anthony's Loud Clicking Noises. This is Stat Check episode 87. Wah, Mr. Bond. Uh, I am Ennis, and I am joined by exactly one other person. So you are getting the no brain cells version of Stat Check tonight. It is myself and Anthony here to talk about all things from the two team events that we've been at recently. Anthony will be going through his Alpine Cup a little bit because he was there the week before and was uh, in transit last week and wasn't able to join us. And I was at the Home Nations uh, tournament in Ireland this weekend, finally ending my international tournament run. Not quite as brutal as Anthony's, but it was still a lot. Um, so yeah, we'll be going through a little bit of that. We've also got the Orcs and Custodies Codexes in basically full now. We've seen the Goonhammer reviews, read all the articles, watched the Art of War Battle reports, all that good stuff that tells us all the ways that we're pretty sure we're going to be getting shot in the face, punched in the face, and then aggressed at walkily by Custodies. Um, yeah, uh, until we find out the points. <laughs> Did you like that one, Anthony? I just ideally not Custodies, right? Probably not a whole lot of getting aggressed at by custodians hopefully a no, lot of custodians they're, they're gonna walk at you real hard and it's gonna be really theoretically scary if they go down 50 points a model um a model. yeah <laughs> yeah they're, they're 50 points a model now and if they go down 50 that book will be terrifying um i think simultaneously custodians are better and orcs are worse than the early reactions show yeah, that's probably both true. But people yeah. love to do both of those things. And it, as always, will be contextual on points. But if yeah. you've noticed, Jeremy and Nathan aren't here, which means context is fake. Only reactionary takes is here. Right. This week. So we yeah. don't have to answer to anything. Uh, we are... I've got one more thing, one small thing to say before we get into it. There will not be stats this week. We are in the process of getting a new list parser built. So Jeremy spent a bunch of time working on that this week, which means the stats aren't quite ready yet. We will have a full stats rundown next week where we'll be probably talking about the end of this balanced data slate period hopefully if it comes out next week that would be the end of the month so we'll have a full rundown on stats this week so expect a much heavier focus on stats next week this week it's the children are playing so we hope everybody has a good time take this for what it is we'll be here doing all the reactionary takes and the content and everything that everybody loves not so much on the stats this week it's the check part or stat check with that said, Anthony, how has your last couple of weeks been? Don't don't cover up on too much. Cover the, the bits you want, but we'll go through your you know your event itself in a little bit later. Um, things are good. Um, Austria was cool. Uh, Vienna was like weirdly familiar. It didn't feel. I don't know. A lot of the other like big cities I've been in in Europe felt very like, dude, I'm in a different place doing different shit, and Vienna was very like. This is just a city. Um, like, the food and stuff we had there was cool and was good. Like, the their railway system's dope. Uh, a lot of that stuff is, like, you know, set up really well. This train that goes straight from the airport to Vienna is super easy to, like, figure out, um, which is cool, especially because it's not in English, so being easy to figure out is thumbs up, good job. Uh, though a lot of those machines can be in English. Um, so... Yeah, just I gotta figure out a way to do that, like, via train to get to Leoben, because, you know, as we all know, that is where uh, WTC is going in 25, and I think that's gonna be a bit of a ride. Um, so, but yeah, everything else has been good. Life stuff's been pretty good. Uh, I'm going to a wedding next week in Texas, so next weekend that'll be cool. Um, job stuff's been good. Warhammer stuff's been pretty good. They announced Emperor's Children today. Fucking love that shit. It's funny, because, like, you know, you have some you have some friends that with you know some privileged information sometimes they're like oh they're gonna be so shit and i'm like i don't you don't understand there are a few things there's not a lot of things in this game that i'm like even if they're bad i'll still love them and British children are like one of two where like even if they are awful i'll be sad but i'm just happy they exist at all they're not even in your name description anthony that's i, I, I know them. yeah uh they are they are i love emperor's children they are uh <laughs> How much would you give for Honor the Prince to be back? Woo! Oh, man. <laughs> that strategy would be fucked up in 10th because you could hit shit you didn't charge. So, like, yeah, that yeah. would be... So for context for everybody, Honor, all, Honor the Prince was an all 6 advance or one of the dice on your charge is automatically a 6? Yeah, it was uh, pretty powerful. <laughs> um, yeah. I, like, there's a lot of stuff they could do. Lucius, you know, it's super funny. Like, a bunch of people are like, oh, like, Lucius has to be your warlord. Like, dude, Lucius is no, great. Lucius is amazing. Dude, yeah. his data so good. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, Lucius had the big, like, he is worse than a regular Chaos Lord energy that's like, oh, that kind of sucks. But as a data sheet, that man is he's good. wildly good. Yeah, he's I tried him good. in, uh, 
I tried him with like a master of executions and a ten mana legionnaires. Dude, like, it's that's so good. So powerful. Yeah, dude, that shit was really good. I tried that too. It was like the best part of that list. Everything died. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Emperor's Children shit is pretty exciting. CSM getting a book is fucking thrilling. I'm so excited for them. Um, their ninth book is like my personal bar since I've started of like the best book. Um because it just like all the different play styles worked, all of the different attachments were cool. Like you could add, a, you had good arguments for playing like any of them. All the marks were like meaningful and unlocked different things or did different things. So I'm really, really looking forward to what like the tenth book can bring, um, and we'll see. Like their tenth index was really cool. Obviously, it was like overtuned post all the other things getting tuned down and them getting buffed in that cycle. Um, but, yeah, there's, like, a lot for them to work with that could be really awesome, and I'm really looking forward to that uh, codex. So, they're also one of my armies for WTC, one of my three. So, I uh, am excited for them. No, it makes a ton of sense. As for myself, it's been, uh, you know, another quiet week. I uh, flew to Ireland on th- on Friday to go and do my, yeah, it was, it's my fifth event in a different country in six weeks. Um, none of which were Scotland, because oh. me and Anthony just... We don't know what taking it chill is. There was uh, only excess and it excess. Was, it was a mistake. I just, I when I booked them, I was like, look, there's three tournaments in three months. It's 12 week span, three tournaments, easy. And then Ennis was like, Anthony, why are you doing three tournaments over six weeks? And I like looked and I was like, no. <laughs> so, you know. The end of one month, the middle of the next, and the start of the last one. <laughs> Brilliant energy. Um <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of respect for Anthony for pulling it off, but yeah, it did, did the same thing. Obviously, it's a lot less travel for me, but doing more of it was rough. I got home yesterday and just didn't didn't want to. I got home yeah. at like 6 p.m. and I was like, oh. woke up this morning and just didn't want to get out of bed. Just, you know, all the good stuff that happens when you're like just burning the candle at both ends and your body's just like, you are going to sleep and I'm going to make you. Um, but yeah. no, so we were out in Home Nations with, uh, with Team Scotland. Um, it's one of the sort of hallmark events on our calendar, one of the ones that we are prepping for every year. It was ourselves, England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, Belgium, the Netherlands, and a Barbarians team, which was comprised of a bunch of like XWC players, one of the guys from Team China, which was super awesome. Um, so just a few people from in and around the UK. Uh, we showed up, we had we got absolutely battered on day one. We managed to go 0-3, but Team Scotland did finally, in round four against the Barbarians, win its first round of WTC tournament games since Brian left. Um, <laughs> and I have to phrase it like that because otherwise uh, Brian will think that we, we care about him, but we can win without you. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even uh, need we, you. No, we don't need you, bitch. Um, and we managed to win both our games on the second day uh, after having a bit of a recovery come back. It was also nice that um, everybody who like paid attention, we got blown up at Pyra. Uh, we had like three or four teams put 100 points on us, and it was not close. Um, whereas for this one, all of our rounds were pretty close. Even the ones that we lost were, you know, we were like punching up into the high 60s, and it was a much, much like closer affair into teams like Northern, Northern Ireland and um, the Netherlands that did beat us. But it was a lot closer, and we were a lot happier with the performance this time. So Team Scotland's on an upward trajectory. I'll talk a little bit my, about my games when we kind of come into the bit that would be the stats section, because there's some interesting stuff in there. Um, but otherwise, that's where I've that's where I've been. It's been good. Uh, always nice to get to see everybody. I got to see Liam for like the fifth time in eight weeks as well. You know, just normal stuff. Yeah. You know, the guy that lives in Belgium that I see more often than my sister. But <laughs> very normal. Yeah. Other than that, I don't have a ton coming up right now. I'm on a like two week break before I run a GT in Scotland, and I don't think I have another international event until June. So I'm. Uh, getting into the it's the balance data slate in a week or two let's get starting on the like the real path to wtc right when we have a better idea of what factions we're likely to be playing what the meta is likely to be and that bit where everybody go everybody's group chat that involves somebody from a different team goes radio silent um it's always my favorite time of year the, the when you just ignore the ignite chat's not spoken in three weeks um yeah the ignite chat's not spoken our backstage is dead silent you know all the backstage stuff. was fine last year because we just mostly didn't care we just because talked about literally we're not anything to each other. Yeah, we talked about anything else. <laughs> exactly. What do you mean? It's us and Poland in there. Hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, the Poles weren't in the. It was only Typhus last year, and Typhus wasn't playing, right? I guess. So it wasn't quite so bad. 
Um, this year, yeah, it'll be a bit different with uh, Nathan and <laughs> Nathan and Typhus and Pumba in there as well. Yeah, uh, this will be fun. So yeah, it's uh, very much looking forward to getting the final like army spreads and deliberations sorted and giving everybody like a all right, guys, go and like actually get grinding and get your practice in properly now. Now that you have a better picture of what you're playing, it's really hard to be like, hey, go and play the current meta bullshit and get really good at it. When you're like, yeah, but this isn't going to exist in a week. Why am I playing Iron Storm? Stop yeah. it. Get some help. Yeah. yeah, why would you play Iron Storm in general? Just play something worse than Blood Angels for free. Silly. Yeah, interesting choice. Um, yeah, with that then, I think, Anthony, do you want to run through your games at Alpha I did all of mine last week. Um, um, do you want to go through yours with the world ears and tell us about how you were punching people in the face? Sure. So my first game in Alpine Cup, um, I was just barely a human, just not doing well. Um, for my first couple rounds, I was fairly sick. So, um, I played Josie Cartwright, I believe is her last name, mm -hmm. um, in the first round and she was a delight. Um, she got a little unlucky at the end of the game and blew up a not blew up sorry didn't explode i was not shadow boxing um the it was not a fit state to shadow i was box. yeah i would dude i was like floor laying um so yeah like you know it was world eaters into necrons man like it was you know trending draw us some weird shit happened monolith died to three eight bound because it got knocked below half and then full reroll wounded to death um and it died and that was like a giant swing it was probably trending towards like a 14 or 12 or something like that if it had lived um mostly because it was at least stuck in place um and then i hit anger on res that like shut the door on it being like a 19 one and then was a 20 0. um necrons uh they're the strongest army in the game and need to be nerfed terribly unless you are fast and do melee damage um so that was that the second round we played against Try hard Romania. Romania yeah. Um, and I played against Votan. That's actually a pretty interesting matchup. I've only played it uh twice prior to the event. Um and it was like a you know, kind of weird to like manage how many units they have versus like how much damage they can like can asterisk do. Uh mm -hmm. but the Votan damage out there is just like out there rolling dice with no rerolls, so sometimes it's shit and doesn't do anything. Um but he made like a small positional mistake on his scout moves that meant that I was able to kill his six man as well as his three man and he just started the game with no bikes. Um, that so army's a lot slower when it doesn't have bikes for some reason. I was able to just like keep it in a place and punch it for a while because it, you know, again, it didn't have bikes. Um, so that was, that like made that a lot easier. But aside from that, he actually played the game really well. Um, there just like was only so much he could do when he was stuck in a place resolving problems in an exact spot and you don't want to get into a phone booth brawl with world leaders um so that was that game uh that was another 20 and then in round three i played against we played against italy italy yep um and my opponent was an absolute gem holy shit this guy was nice um he was playing court uh i was playing world leaders um obviously um we had like a bit of a weird early game where like he went first and like just touched each objective with one wraith in the middle. And then I, I moved up like Invocatus and a Jackal squad and he reactive moved in neither position. So I was just like, you get a five on primary. And he was like, uh-huh. And I was like, all right, nothing else moves. Everything else stages. Good luck. Uh, and then, like, you know, the next turn, I like actually moved out and started to hit him with some stuff. Um, Angron lights out the Nightbringer with uh no sustained but he did that. i did use plus one to wound and i had uh rerolls to win so i was like you know i just handed him nine saves and he failed seven um and then rolling no like all the damages that i rolled were like odd at increments which was funny because it would be like you know roll a five which is the same as rolling a six roll a three which is the same as rolling a four um because he has damage and I'm plus two, so it was like just like all the wrong breakpoints, basically. Um, so he ended up dying, um, and then I killed two wraith units in the same turn, and the game kind of just like collapsed from there. Um, he also had the transcendent and try and precision Karn and failed twice, 
Um, and that was amusing. That is not what's supposed to happen, but it certainly did. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> three ones to hit into three ones to oh. wound is a hell of a life to live with that guy. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I had that as well in my game against Necron to against Zozo. He yeah. his, uh, his transcendent went in and was like three ones to hit, or sorry, his Nightbringer rolled three ones to hit, two ones to wound, and I passed the one four up behind him on you know, my captain when he tried to position him out. So sad. He's like, dude, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So that was that. Uh, finished day one, 60 0. was pretty good. Um, day two, we started with England. Yeah. Um, we basically made a pairings mistake. Um, based off of, like, some suboptimal info as it came down to board choices that led to Typhus getting fisted um, and me having to play Harrison on a board choice that functionally didn't really matter. It was bad for him, but it was also quite bad for me. Um, so I ended up taking a 7 on that one. I played fixed. It was a fairly significant mistake. Um, I should have just played tactical like I pretty much always do. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah. Shout out to Kito. Another another victim in the Necron trail. Um, but yeah, I should have just played tactical. I don't know. Like, I just, yeah. Just a suboptimal decision point. I haven't played fixed in like 40 games. I'm just going to continue on not playing fixed. It just doesn't make sense for what eaters are trying to do. Um, that game at a whole bunch of steps would have been easier if I had just been like doing what the cards told me to instead of like sticking to this very regimented, clearly telegraphed game plan. Um, so that was that, even with an anger on res to like crank it back, that probably took it from like, you know, like a five to a seven or whatever. By the end of it, I had killed like three tanks because anger on missed a five and three rollable charge into two of them, which was fucking depressing. Um, which meant that like a flank collapsed when it otherwise would have been fairly easy. It was pretty bad. Um, so that was a pretty big swing. Um, just some unfortunate stuff, but Alex played it really well. He was actually a complete delight to play, um, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, that was like, honestly, that was one of my, one of the better games I've had in a hot minute. Um, he was really nice. So that was that round. And then going into the last round, we played against Poland. Um, and I got to play against Kruger. Kruger was fucking stellar. The best. We spent so much time just hanging out that we started our clocks in the game with an hour and 15 each. Uh, cause we were fucking around for a while, talking about armies, just doing stuff, not playing the game. Um, so we got into it. We started playing. Um, it was He was playing Sisters. So I was playing, obviously, World Leaders. Um, and yeah, it was just like every Sisters game I've ever played, which is like, we brawl for a while. One of his flanks like collapses out under the weight of the pressure. You know, his other flank is like there, but doing things. He starts to take my backfield. The Angron takes his I won 12-8. Not a particularly, like, you know. This was another game, though, where Karn just told him to eat it. Uh, Karn's Rhino got killed, and Karn, like, fell out of the Rhino. And then, like, he shot at him, didn't do anything, really. He charged him with Celestine's unit, killed, like, one Berserker. Swing back, killed, like, seven of the girls in that squad, and, or, like, all of the girls or something, down to just Celestine. Celestine fell back, so Eisenhorn and a unit of multi with a multi multi could shoot him again didn't hit or wound, charged him, killed two Berserkers down to one, swing back, kill that whole squad. Like, just, no! Um, so, yeah. There were some mistakes I made early in that game that I think were pretty important. Um, I charged with a Jackal squad into a squad of screening Arcos that ended up getting me heroic. Um, and I definitely, like, let the panic brain win and swung the Jackals at the unit that heroic me. Because I was like, oh, they're one wound, like, it should, you know, I should, like, try and chip some of these down while I can. Um, and then I swung a bunch of AP0 weapons on a squad with a two-up save Gemini in it, and that was wrong, as it turns out. Um, so I should have just put all those attacks into the Arcos, which would have cleared them faster. I was also probably a little too conservative with Angron. You could be fairly rowdy with him, especially early in Dislisters, because it takes them a ton of effort to kill him. And if they don't have the sixes, you can, you know, really start to push. But yeah. That was uh that was my game. So I finished the event as our top scorer. Woo! Um, how was the um how was the Eisenhorn tech? Because that's definitely the most interesting thing from that list. It was really good. He just rolled like shit, so it wasn't as exciting. And he uh his first twelve miracle dice were a three or less. So um so that made it worse. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't know, 
Um, you can't use Miracle Dice on Eisenhorn when he's not in a squad because he doesn't have the Ice of Faith keyword. But yeah. when you firing deck his gun, the Rhino sure can. Uh, and his gun is like marginally terrifying. It's like five, two, three dev wounds, psychic precision. I think it's six, hits. two, three. Whatever it is, it sucks. It's it, rolling a six to wound. Let's be yeah. honest here. It's yeah. getting double dice with a triumph and killing your character. Or <laughs> he'll do it in Overwatch and just hand you two sixes and be like, four hits, roll to wound, goodbye, Technomancer, or whatever. <laughs> that too, yeah. Basically, yeah. an unpleasant series of events to have to be subject to. Uh, it's a super cool tech apple. If you're trying, if you're playing sisters uh, at the moment, give it a shot. It's uh, really interesting. Yeah, it was really cool. So that was it. Uh, it was a pretty. It was a good event. It was fun. It was well run. Um, the town is going to be a little tough. Leoben's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. The area around it, fucking beautiful. Uh, the Chinese restaurant we went to on the Sunday, that place is incredible. Pretty sure everything in that cloud town, like the whole thing, is just closed by 8 p.m. So yeah. WTC is going to be a little touch and go. They're going to have to like find a bar to be like, listen, if you stay open past eight, you'll make 70 grand this week. But you got to <laughs> stay open. Uh, yeah. And you, you know, guys want to just make all of the money in the world. Yeah, just just stay open. Stay open and let people drink in front. That's all you need to do. Um, all of the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, dude, it's, I'm sure Bob Bar Popular is going to weep at the loss of WTC in, in Mechlin. Um, uh, yes, yes, it will. <laughs> but, you know, anyway. So, yeah, the town is, like, really nice. Um, and, like, for all that sort of stuff. But we definitely ate a fair amount more McDonald's than is probably optimal for a given weekend. Um, but, yeah, everything else was dope. Event was really cool. Got, like, we got cool rings. Got this, this bad boy. The rings are really nice, yeah. That looks like shit. Never mind. Whatever. Um, you get the idea. It's a cool ring. It's bronze because we because we failed. Gold. <laughs> yeah, it's bronze because we failed. But aside from that, it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, it uh, it is actually the first team tournament that I've attended and not won besides WTC. So we'll have to recover that pride soon. Uh, we'll we'll figure that out at whatever next team event I attend, and we'll go from there. But yeah, it was a it was a good time uh, playing like world leaders, you, right? So. What'd you say? Your next one's just WTC, right? It's... Uh, it depends. There's like, you know, there there's some other stuff in the maybe works, but yeah. My next like non-exhibition team event is WTC. So hopefully we just win that and then it'll be all right. But yeah, it's been a really cool um, sprint, actually. I've been playing nothing but World Leaders um, for all my events for like the last like seven months now. Um, and that's been really cool that they've stayed, you know, like basically like, you know, stable in big air quotes. Has nothing about world leaders or playing world leaders is stable, but being able to play world leaders, yeah, being able to play world leaders has been stable, which is cool. Um, so yeah, hopefully the uh, the recent meta changes and the slate and all that stuff don't fuck them up too bad. But I think they're they're an interesting faction because they exist on like a knife edge, right? They're very often like either quite good in the hands of a good pilot or just shit, even if you're good, and that is you know that's the space they live in. Yeah, it's a dangerous place to be in any meta shift, right? Like, what if the met the army like armies with fight first just become suddenly really popular? Right? Yeah. It's always a little bit dangerous. Not that it's the end of the world. There are ways to means to play around that, but it, may, it increases the burden a lot on you to get it right, which makes the army much harder to play. Or, or it increases the burden on your your pairings team, right? Like, I have not even played a practice game of world eaters into custodians. I was just like, I'm not. No, <laughs> it's just not worth the effort. Like, why bother? Just don't do that to me and we'll be good. And across all these events, I've played Custodies zero times because we just hard avoid it and it's fine. So there's ways around it. There's definitely a lot of, like, man plays teams with very high-level pairing staff privilege happening. Um, but also, there's a little bit of, like, if you don't scam me, I'll bring you a really high score. So, you know, <laughs> it's worth it. Um, just let me play the game, bro. Just Dude, let me just, do it. Yeah, yeah just let me play against reasonable people. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's good news largely for, like, people still playing singles. Um, if you're, you know, doing single stuff, uh, world leaders are a lot more broadly viable now because um, I don't expect custodies to be 10% of the meta anymore. And 
personally. It's like, going to be so nice. Yeah, I was just not willing, like, even before, even with all the success I've had with World Leaders, I was not willing to participate in the singles meta where, like, a 1 in 10 chance to just, like, run into the, like, the literal, like, no chance to beat the person if they're within it's two not, skill brackets even, of you. It's one in one in three per round as well, right? It's not even like it's per game. Sure. Or like one in ten. So you're just like round one, flip weight the weighted coin, round two, weighted coin. And those custodians players are winning their games. Oh so yeah. It starts getting worse as you get into the upper upper brackets. So it's rough out there. Glad yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was just like, you know, there. but you know, that was not worth doing before. But I think now I think it's okay. I think most of the rest of the armies that are good, you'll be able to play around or into in some way, shape, or form. That is okay. Um, I would prefer it wasn't, mostly because I think the Custodes book, on top of being bad, is also boring. Do you not like Golden Wall? We'll talk more about the Custodes book later. Yeah, I just... Is, what if Custodes is the new normal power level, nerfs for everyone? Well, I'll have a great time playing Nids. Yeah, I yeah, I don't want that to be the thing. I don't like again, I said this a little bit earlier, but I really don't think they're like fucking irredeemably bad. I think for most people, like the parts of custodies that were making them like auto win shit very often was their data sheets. And they're and worse, there's... but not irredeemably so. Yeah, they're still dudes with four ups. Like they're bad. Don't get me wrong. Like I would not take custodies in an eight man roster. But you know, I think John that... will find a way for WDC, as we all know. Yeah, at this rate. I mean, if they get the Drukari treatment, they get a new detachment. <laughs> like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> they just reprint old shield host with a different name. <laughs> yeah, it's the the healed shost. <laughs> Hydra host and just like just like in Marvel. There you go. Um, no, yeah. I'll uh, very quickly run through my games. Uh, Home Nations, because uh, as always, people seem to like hearing about them. Um, so I played Blood Angels. I played more or less the list I had at Alpine Cup, except with um, I cut the Kalidus Assassin because uh, my bastard Grey Knight player wanted wanted a Kalidus Assassin, and I didn't have the heart to say no. Uh, so I dropped her at one of the impulsors for a ten of Vanguard veterans with the Sanguinary Priest. And man, is that unit hilarious when it has oath and useless when it doesn't, or when it doesn't charge? Yeah, Ongoing I mean, combats unit... are that thing's bane. It's very funny. That unit uh, just needs oaths. You can't yeah. just be sat there. Like you, you it either gets oaths. Well, no, it always gets oaths, but yep. sometimes it also gets fallback and charge. Like you're never, yes. you're never just staying there. <laughs> the on the ongoing combat where I had to kill a crusader, the a knight crusader that I was in combat with, and I'm just like, well, I guess I'm just threes and sixes, bro. <laughs> no, yeah. le no lethals here because I didn't charge. Um, so yeah. we use the the tried and true team Scotland pairing strategy of can we maneuver Innis into beating somebody over the head, uh, which worked out great this time. Uh, my round one, I played into Dylan Usher's uh, Sisters of Battle. Um, we got the the good old sisters hiding in their corners as Bloody Nose runs screaming at them. Um, got to do all of the nice fun screening things, shooting castigators when your opponent's not holding sixes on miracle dice is the most fun thing in the world. Just like die, please go away and stop shooting my models. Yeah. Um, I do enjoy I do enjoy a good shooting phase uh, with, with an army that shouldn't be out shooting your opponent, but is anyway. Um, Vanguard veterans get punched all to death. You know all the good stuff. Um, highlight of that game half definitely has to be the ten Arco flagellants that charged my assault intercessors. The Sanguinar drops in, kills three of them. Fight on death kills the rest, including with that between that and the hazardous checks. Um, and then the captain just goes off and goes just like goes and kills the stuff on his own objective with the Sangador. So like the two characters just go on a solo expedition. Very fun. Do do enjoy. Uh, I love when the captain just gets to do. Angels. Yeah, yeah. The captain just gets to go and do his go and do his own thing for a bit. It's great fun. I really do enjoy that part of it. Um, game two, I played into. Oh Christ! Uh, this was Ireland. No, this was Netherlands. I played into Chris Clayton and his Grey Knights. Um, this one was a super interesting game in the in the sense that um, Grey Knights have a lot of ability to be really annoying to catch as Blood Angels. Uh, Mr. Deimos is annoying, but we, we were doing the good old, um, got to do the good old rapid ingress into a place where if you charge me, I will heroic you while holding three CP. And suddenly my death company didn't get charged. And they just got shot a bit and a shot to, and a shot to half strength sort of death company is still terrifying. So they ran about in his backfield and I just kind of chased the rest of it around with... Um, with the big guys ended up winning that one 16-4. First one was an 18-2. Um, 64 to Custodes was very happy with that. The, it was the Canis Rex version. So, or sorry, um, Granite version, Canis Rex and five NDKs. 
and triple librarian it's just like well i don't guess i don't get to have vehicles this game um as they just get that snapped by the librarians the first one blew himself up and the other two did 14 mortal wounds to my my uh, rhino it's like well yikes thanks buddy we really appreciate your service um yeah very very fun set of um like very interesting set of games there actually like there was a lot of um like weird nuances to a few of them like trying to play like pronged approaches with the t- with the um the death cover unit so that you can catch either of the things that are going to happen in grassy you're like no you don't get to you don't get to mess both of these you figure it out i'm not doing the math you decide which one of these is dying uh and just be like no <laughs> yeah just get getting to do the approach of you're going to figure this out not me is very much the way i like playing into granites just you you figure this out i don't want to have to play warhammer I, just I turn one lancers just shot city of actions i was just put him down somewhere i don't care just don't make me deal with that anymore yeah, enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, uh, every time I play against Grey Knights or Thousand Sons for that matter, I'm like, listen, bro, I'm moving here. Don't tell me what you can do. Clock to you. Go nuts. <laughs> Fucking good luck. Yeah, for sure. Game three, I got to have the full. Um, I had played a couple of games of the Blood Angels into Custodies on TTS. But oh, God, on TTS, it's so it's all, fucked up. It, on, on TTS, it was a little bit like, wasn't entirely sure what I was doing with the first couple of times, just kind of like playing it slow, not being too. This one, I was like, all right. I know you can't stop me, and just shoved. And I, this was one of the ones where, like, my lancers both just got one shot by Caladiuses. Like, I tried to kill one. Yeah, they did. Back, and it was like, do you know what? I knew that was going to happen. Fair enough. <laughs> I did get to outrange one of them, which was quite funny. Uh, it's just like playing on the long board edge on sweeping. I was just like, you're at range, bro. Sorry. <laughs> you're not coming forward. Um, died to the first one. It was great. Uh, very average. Um, but then we we had kind of the Okay, everything is pushed forward. Are you ingressing Trajan? No? Cool. Here's my ingress into his deployment zone. Um, does your Warden Squad want to pop the Feel No Pain? Has to pop in the shooting phase. Lost four anyway. Uh, <laughs> three to the three to the Inferno Pistols, one to the Lancer. Um, That's so unlikely. Just, yeah. you, you, had, you had the guy like nine Feel No Pains. He's like, I'm not rolling these. I'm like, you should roll it. It takes four damage. I'm like, oh, God, that guy died. Um, so I got to then like multi-charge that squad of two models and Kyria's squad. And he's like, well, neither of these are worth fighting first with now. And I'm like, I know they're not. What's your plan? He's like, I guess I'll minus one damage. Give him the zero primary and the ritual on turn one, on turn two. And you're just like, this is not going to go well for you. But yeah, that's a, bad, turn three. that's a bad day um, in the office for the custodians, man. That you got like a five, so- then a zero, then a zero, then a five, I think. Because like I couldn't deal with, like he had the Caladius on two objectives and I couldn't <laughs> physically get enough OC on it to take it off of one of them. So I ended up swinging that one to a 19-1. But there was like, I, I, that game was disrespectful. Um, having that like, that squad that ingressed into his deployment zone and charged into Kyria's squad, he fell back from and then didn't charge with his other squad because he couldn't, because it would just die. So he had to sit there and go, well, I'm going to make you do it in your turn so that at least you don't like get to go and do something else with it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so my squad just sat on two objectives in his deployment zone, not getting charged, while Trajan deployed homers in the middle. Um, and then I jumped over to the other Warden squad and Kyria's squad that was like at like Kyria and two dudes because we brought one back to score primary. Uh, and I went, okay, um, would you like to feel no pain the warden squad? And he goes, yes. And I'm like, cool. Kyria squad's dead to shooting. Charge you now. And it's just, it was so upsetting. Um, that that matchup is very, very miserable for Custodes. Having played it a couple of times now, like, Dude, it's yeah, so I, bad. I don't understand what, I don't even know what you're meant to do. Like, as a... Die. You're supposed to die and lose. <laughs> yeah, that genuinely genuinely is exactly how it felt it just felt like there was nothing they could do yeah um which personally as the player on the positive side of that matchup felt great just the best um being custodies without them being able to do anything having played Bailey armies a bunch is the nicest feeling yep. you're just like okay cool i have just won no problem um so yeah put a 19 one there my round <laughs> four was into the barbarians i got to play into imperial knights and i Look, I played one of the uh, one of like Team Ireland's um, like development players, and he was lovely young guy playing um, like Canis, a mysterious guardian crusader, and uh, a, a, a Sarasis Night Lancer. Which, to be fair, is the first thing I've ever had live a Death Company charge. Uh, I think has a lot of wounds and a four vulnerable save, and it's toughest yeah. twelve. And it I can didn't live. Have this, it I might, didn't have it, the strap for Lance. It, it lived. <laughs> you didn't have the strap for Lance. Well, yeah, I had to use it somewhere else. So 
that this was one of those awkward games where like I got two scoreable cards on turn one and was like, I need to take these because I played for a 20. And then I had to burn double CP on the assault intercession with jump pack squad to kill an armiger because I grenade stratted and then lance lance lethal. With all that does kill an armiger on average, by the way, just in case you were worried. Uh that the 85 point squad just punching up, you know. Uh nice average fair warhammer. Uh <laughs> You look upset, Anthony. I, I'm more sad that you let the big boy live to kill the little boy, but it's okay. Oh, no, I mean, he still died the next turn. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it was kind of one of those, at the end of his turn two, or the end of my turn two, he had um, he had five models left and none of them were big knights. It was like three, it was like Hector Rex on foot, the three three henchmen, and an armor girl on five health at the end of his turn three. Just brutal game we played on super as well at his choice which is one of those ones where you're like i don't know why you thought this was a good choice but i'm happy to show you why it's not yeah, yeah super owls are always a... don't play oh. on super owls if you've not played on super owls before especially if you're playing knights guys just don't do it um and then last round was wales i got to play the mirror match into john scrivens of six plus plus uh who is a lovely lovely boy lovely lovely man uh, i've done a bunch of content with him he's done um a bunch of coverage from like the road to WTC stuff basically of like going through like what it takes for like cool stuff for that really really wonderful guy he's one of the like the captains he set up um did not have an understanding of how to focus his matchup and also went first which is like the like a horrible combination to like roll into in that situation where you're just like I don't really know what I'm doing here and also you're going to you're like I got all the agency on ingress this one ended up with um he kind of pushed a little bit forward on his turn one because he kind of had to with the way his cards worked out. Um, he drew, like, secure no man's land and things like that, so he put, like, a scout squad on each objective. I was just like, well, Sangador can't come in turn one, so here is my army. Um, and just, like, shot the scout squad to death with the Lancer and, like, pistols and then charged behind them into an Impulsor, piled into one of his assault and squads, killed it. The other one, the other, like, squad on the side piled in, wrapped a land, like, wrapped his Impulsor because we were, like, it was sweeping gauge at the point where we were super close. He then kind of deals with that a little bit, gets Sanguine or doesn't have a good answer for it. And then I do my ingress nine inches off away from his death company rhino, move 12 inches forward, charge past it into a Lancer and fully enclose it at the end of his turn two. I'm like, well, that's game over. Yeah. He hits the nine inch charge with his death company back. My fight on death kills half of his death company squad and the rhino. So he spills out. And then, you know, my death company and my bang bricks come over and end the game. Um, Brutal. A little uncomfortable. This one ended up being 19-1, partly because, mostly because it was Purge the Foe. I don't know how on earth you ever deny somebody primary and Purge the Foe. It's you just don't, not really doable. Usually. Yeah, you're just like, oh, so you have scored eight this turn. Congrats, man. You're playing Warhammer. Um, yeah, got the, got this one too. If I had drawn Capture and Outpost on five, I would have gotten it. I would have gotten the 20 by exactly, uh, but I only got 37 secondary. So 19-1. Uh, but overall, yeah, super awesome. Like The bonus list is so much fun to play. It is wildly overpowered um genuinely just not fit not a fair army dude it's um, crazy like you have like two bad matchups and yeah, one of them like, requires you to go second i don't love thousand sons guard is a little awkward and eldar can be messy and everything else is like yep you know i'll like there are matchups in there that are probably like drawish or difficult and coin flippy but or, none of them are bad yeah right or your opponent makes a tiny mistake and then it's just the fucking awful ends, yeah because yeah. you're a rapid ingress army and rapid ingress is a fair and balanced strategy Keeping the uh, edition held together. Doctor, <laughs> rapid ingressing the Sanguinor for primary is my favorite play. Dude, uh, rapid ingressing the Sanguinor is like all the problems of the edition of one spot. That's fight first, loan op, and rapid ingress. That's fucking. <laughs> yep, it's and oath moment. Like God, you imagine this army with old oath. That's all I'm really missing is why didn't I just play this at WTC? Uh, and I know why. It's because one Wraith Knight would have ended the tournament, but <laughs> oh, killed you so hard you wouldn't have gotten to come back in the next game, dude. It would have been fucking awful. <laughs> I think about that with uh, world leaders actually pretty often. Although I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Anthony though, ten man death company or ten man van vet squad with double rapid ingressing them, like it's good. Rapid ingress the free strat that would have been good fun. So yeah. uh, if they box locked DA uh, blood angels death company, uh, blood angels would be a significantly weaker army, but would not be dead because the van vet squad is still really strong. Also, like still the... get away with like the Lamarty squad would still be okay. Dude, the the shit in the boxes for blood in for death company is pretty good. There's like two thunder hammers in there. There's two it's fucking two fists. thunder hammers, one power fist per five. 
Okay. Yeah. It, it's like still I said, pretty it, good. Wouldn't, it wouldn't be terrible. Your squad would have four Thunder Hammers, two Power Fists, and like four Chain Swords. It would be probably about the same pause. It would be significantly weaker, but it would not suck. That's still You'd pretty get good. Four Plasma Pistols, four Inferno Pistols, or like four, four Inferno Pistols, two Plasma Pistols, and four Thunder Hammer guys. Like, it would be worse. It would still be fine with Lamartis. You wouldn't run, I don't think you'd run the Foot Squad. Um, I think you'd just run more Vets, but. It would be it would it would kind of suck. Let's just hope for Primaris Death Company that just all have power fists by default. Uh, <laughs> Dude, there's so, I have such high hopes for like Primaris Blood Angel stuff. Like Dude, it's just gonna be chain swords. Be I, all chain swords. I don't even care fist. about the Death Company. It's the Sangard. Give me Primaris Sangard. Fuck. And they're gonna be built like in, in, uh, Inner Circle Companions. I don't even them. care. Inner Circle pe- Companions with the Sun's buff would hit real hard if they were move twelve. That is fair. But yeah, overall, um, Blood Angels. Blood Angels is good. You should play Blood Angels. If you're not playing Blood Angels, why not? They're what fun. Are you doing? Hit things yeah. fast. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I got on the like the events pack stuff. As far as like things go for like the next couple of weeks, I'm basically in holding pattern waiting for balance data slate with work and in between, just prepping like I've got a I'm running a GT in three weeks and playing it as well. So it's kind of a case of wait and see what happens, get all the, the stuff prepped for that, and then hopefully launch into a brave new meta in a couple of weeks. What about yourself? You're, you're at a wedding. You got any tournaments on the lineup, or is it just single, just uh, teams practice until WC now for you? It is, yeah, it's just teams practice. Um, I have a very, like, relaxed schedule now. It's um, the closest we would maybe get is... Uh... You got the Dallas thing, right? Yeah, maybe that, and then like some local stuff, maybe. Oh, sorry, you have the DreamHack thing. Have you and I? Have you guys announced that yet? Or that... No, and we're not sure like who's going or what's the what for that yet. We have a uh, team. Team America selection is next Wednesday, though. That is fun. How yeah. are you feeling for that? I know you can't. Not asking you to leak anything, but how is the uh, how is the confidence in the room? Uh, I mean, I am quite confident. I feel like I've Shocked, had really. I've had a bit of a banner run here uh, from you know LG three through now. Um, I mean, basically from, like, when we stopped last year through now. I think I've, you know. You guys are quite good at Warhammer. Yeah, I've done all right. Uh, so, yeah, things have broadly gone pretty well. I'm feeling pretty confident. I've done, a, you know, a lot of a lot of work to try to get us into a position where we can feel pretty confident, right? Um, mm-hmm. So that sort of stuff has been really good. Hopefully, you know, make the team. Um, I think that, like. basically in charge, right? It'd be hard for you not to. Not Just necessarily, because that's not that's not really how like the the process works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but like for, um, like I think John is the best of us, so he'll probably be the first in the door based on how our process goes. Um, and then we kind of you know we work backwards from there. We figure it out. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting year. Like we have. Um, like, you know, to give someone a particular shout out, like Nick Nadavati was in the Academy this year, and he definitely could have, like, you know, I joked about this from, like, the minute we made people, like, write applications, um, that I thought Nick's was just going to say, like, in all lowercase with, like, bad punctuation, like, I'm the brown magic bitch. Um, but instead, like, you know, he took it really seriously and has continued to take it really seriously. I think Nick might be the player on the team with the most reps, um, which is, you know, given that he does it as a full-time job, really impressive. Um, so he's done a, like a legitimately impressive, uh, job of like picking up an army that he wasn't necessarily playing before we asked him to grinding it out really hard and like doing really well. So, you know, um, uh, yeah, a lot of, like a lot of the, I mean, like, to him. like it's, it's hard work to change your habits. Like I, I know we saw him at Cali cup and it was definitely, I think he had a performance that he wasn't entirely proud of and kind of took the right lessons from it and has come back much stronger. And it's, you know, awesome for the community to see people like Nick stepping up and really being community leaders and doing the best they can going forward. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that's been really awesome. Um, Nothing else like super crazy. I mean, like, you know, a lot of the like usual suspects have done really well that you would expect to do well. Um, You know, Brian's crushing it. Andrew's crushing it. Zach's been doing really well. Um, A lot of our returning starters have had like really good performances, you know, here and there, but we kind of expect that from them, right? They made the team last year. They they were like, you know, chosen partially because they're very good at Warhammer, but also because they're like exemplars and they're given local community. So, you know, people have won events. Um, but yeah, we will uh, we'll see how it goes. It's a pretty exciting year. We just got our first like big real sponsorship from Frontline Gaming, which has been pretty cool. There'll be more announced with that in the coming weeks. 
Um, yeah, it's going to be a good year for us. I'm excited. It's been a lot, a uh, shitload, a literal second job worth of work um, to get us yes, to this point. Is. But, uh, you know, it's going well. Things are good. Things are good on Team USA. And I can't wait to grind all my teammates into dust at Champs Cup with stat check <laughs> after we win WTC. Without a doubt, what's going to happen? It's mm -hmm. not even a question. The stat Champs Cup is going to be so awesome. We're gonna... Stat check empire starts at Champs Cup. It's going to be great. All right. I'm going to roll the plugs. Then we're going to do the show questions. Uh, I assume we will probably have a little bit of a shorter show than average this week because if you don't have anybody noticed, there's only two of us again. So Also, we don't have the stats. <laughs> we don't have the stats. Yeah, that's a solid like 20 minutes of the show that's just Thanos snapped. So it'll be fine. And Cahill, we all missed you. Uh, we all missed you so much, Home Nations. It was really weird not having you there, man. Um, right. Thanks, everybody, for being with us so far for episode 87, etc. Oh, uh, I suppose at some point we'll talk about the Origin Custodes Codex. People have asked a bunch of questions about them. They will be coming up later in the show. I did just read our episode tail again. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for being with us so far for episode 87 of Stat Check. Wa, Mr. Bond. Uh, if you're enjoying the show, please do do all the standard likes, comments, subscriptions. It really helps us out with engagement and just making sure that people know that we exist, the cool stuff that we're doing, and gives us more opportunity to continue to bring that cool stuff to everybody in the community, which everybody seems to be enjoying, so I find it hard to complain. Um, that's youtube.com slash statcheck. You can catch us live every Tuesday at 11 EST. Uh, no, 6 EST, 11 UK time. Uh, I promise I know. Uh, Seth, you definitely don't want to cash in today. You should save that for when the codex is actually out, and we've played with it a bit. If you're interested in supporting the show a bit more, you can check out patreon.com slash statcheck. $5 a month gets you access to our incredible, incredible uh, online community where you can talk about all kinds of things like female custodies and um, custodies nerfs. And I think it's mostly just been custodies for the last like five days. It's been um, a lot of custodies over the last It's been a days. lot of custodies, yeah. Um, but also you can take part in things like the Vibic League, get access to a bunch of extra, dis extra discount codes and uh, access to speaking to us a bunch, which I hear is a thing that people get a lot of value out of allegedly i would generally recommend especially if you want to see me and anthony argue about either side of the lancer debate um oh. that's right i hate your opinions too it's fine the weakness um, the weakness <laughs> to take guns in blood angels it offends me i enjoy the gun phase you can check out all of our sponsors. They're all linked in the description, but I'll give them a brief shout out here. You can check out Will and Yutani for all the WC terrain and also all of your other various terrain needs. That's will and inc I want to say, but it's definitely in the description. You can use our code to get a small discount there. That is StatCheck5. You can check out Saltar Games on Etsy using code StatCheck15 for 15% off on your acrylic tokens, markers, uh, measuring gauges, all that good stuff that lets you play the game a little bit easier and reduce the cognitive load of running screaming at people with Blood Angels. Um, having like a big red angry button that says Oath of Moment makes it a lot easier to remember that you have Oath of Moment on something or to distribute it. And uh, I strongly recommend it because I will just skip it otherwise. Realistically, what I need to do is get tactical cards like printed, like stapled to my hand so I remember to draw them as well. Because um, sometimes you just see red with, you're like, I have Ingress Death Company and I can end the game. Therefore, I should run at you now and don't draw cards. And you're just like, oh, I hope these are scorable when I draw them at the end of the turn. Um, not Definitely didn't do that more than once. Uh, I shouldn't play aggressive armies. I'm very bad at doing it safely. Um, <laughs> and you can check out red-dragon.ca. You can, you, you'll get a discount code for 20% off if you're a member of our Patreon community, but they are your standard, wonderful, wonderful um, local game store out of Ottawa, Canada. If you are in Canada or anywhere internationally, do check them out for all of your various hobby needs. Um, you can also find all of our stat check merch there, stuff like objective markers and mats and dice. We should... I think have our our last merch store going live in the next day or so. So Dude, it's going to be week, so you, sick. Um, stuff with shirts and hoodies and things like that. I am reasonably confident that that goes live. Like if if you're listening to this within 24 hours of it going live, so we will hopefully have all of that stuff with ourselves and also available for all of you guys within certainly by the end of this week. That being the 16th of April. Um, so we are really looking forward to being able to bring all of that to you guys. You can check out any of the other various shows on the network if you want to rep even more of the Stat Check brand. There is X and One, End of the Matrix, Take All Comers, and Champions of 40k. Those are our various shows on the network. Champions of 40k has just released its new episode with Jake Harding of Vanguard Tactics. Uh, I think. Oh, don't quote me on that one. I've just had a sudden, I'm not sure that's the right one. 
the most handsome uh, man in 40k. He is he is wonderful, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's him, but I'm gonna double check because I don't want to don't want to say the wrong thing. But Steve is just Steve is doing even more cool things in the 40k sphere, and you should definitely listen to him. Take all comers will have their new episode on Saturday something Saturday on Saturday. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what they're going to be doing the new show on because, yeah, Jake Volton Harding, episode number three of Champions of Forty K. I knew I was right about that. Thank goodness for that. I had a sudden like it's not it wasn't like another Jack it wasn't Jack something. So good to double check that. Uh, End of the Matrix have just done their post episode on Alpine Cup, or should have that coming out this week. I think that'll be coming out this week. Um, so if you want to hear Nathan and Typhus and Pumbas takes on Alpine Cup after hearing mine and Anthony's in the last week, check that out. That should be sometime this week. Usually that's on Wednesdays. I would expect it to be soon. And X and One is on currently on hiatus, but do check out the back episodes because they are definitely the most timeless content that 4K release that we release on StatCheck outside of the Champions of 4K stuff. Lastly, if you're interested in getting help from either myself, Typhus, or Jeremy in terms of improving your own gameplay, whether that's for an upcoming tournament, just looking at getting a refresh on your list for the balance data slate, or just want to work on yourself as a player, check out stat-check.com slash coaching or drop us an email at coaching at stat-check.com and we'd be more than happy to help you out with anything that you're looking to work on as a player. That's my spiel for the co- That's my spiel for the plugs. It's so much easier when Nathan and Jeremy aren't making fun of me the whole time. Anthony's so much nicer than them. I, dude, fucking someone clip that shit. Like, <laughs> I mean, we all knew you were nicer than Nathan and Jeremy. I don't think that anybody's ever been, that's ever been in doubt. I guess that's right. Um, so we will. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the show questions. As always, if you're interested in getting your question read out on the show, check out the StatChat Patreon, or you can leave a super chat in the YouTube chat. Um, I will do my best to post them in the chat as Jeremy go as we go. Um, and if we don't end up covering orcs and custodies in any great depth, we will probably take a couple minutes at the end just to talk about the new the new books as we read them. Anthony, is that good to you? Sounds good. All right, let's jump into questions. So from Sam Lemon, he asks to Ennis, how does Team Scotland feel about their recent team event performances and where are you hoping to make changes and improvements? Ooh, tough one. Um, right in the kidneys. Just right, right in to the yeah, no, fuck it. Ow. Bam! Um, <laughs> so yeah, we've definitely had a rough go of the last couple of team events across Pyra and Home Nations. We had a combined total of two wins, seven losses, and one draw, um, which is definitely not where we're looking to be going forward. However, we have had we had a couple of instances with uh, for home nations we had a couple of players drop early before the event and we had to pull in our coach to play and unfortunately then didn't have a coach available for the event and for euro trash we had kind of the similar we didn't have a coach playing we were bringing we brought in some new players who and you know just trying them out and in a very tough environment that was a group of what are effectively tier one teams and belgium and we are you know a tier two team and it showed they were better than us they were better prepared than us and we were coming in like that was our first real instance of prepping for this season and the other teams were coming in sharper than we were and it showed so we've definitely done a bunch more we've stepped into doing a bunch more on the scrimming side and internal practice and preps and just making sure that everybody is as up to date as possible and as supported as possible because the thing that we don't want to happen is everybody to fall apart with you know the stress and the pressure of oh my god i've done so badly i need to do better next time but it's just you know this is a long season we have another four months before WC people have got plenty of time to grow, improve, and sort out armies and play styles and get more comfortable in the team format. So that's really what we're pushing at the moment is just everybody getting, you know, more comfortable in their own skin of being part of Team Scotland and what that looks like this year, stepping back from a place where we had, you know, another player like Brian on the team, where we're now, you know, trying to meet, we're trying to money ball and get, get Brian back in the aggregate and we'll see how well it works out. Good luck. Anthony, you battered us. How did you feel? <laughs> um... I think the the growth that we talked about a little bit before the podcast is really impressive. That uh, between the events, you guys have done a good job of like recognizing some problems and improving them. Mainly, you know, the death of ten tennis um, is pretty important. I think for your team's success. Um, but I think that it's just going to be a matter of like you know, guiding that knife. If you can like line up the pairings so that everyone is like comfortable to get their, like, you know, score some fucking points, boys, and then you can bring home the big bucks, which is, frankly, an impressive and difficult amount of pressure to put on oneself while also being in a leadership role. You know, if you can fucking land it, I think you guys will be in great great shape. I just think that's going to be hard. Um, But I think you guys, like, you know, have shown the ability to do so between events. It's just going to be a matter of winding you up onto the right things to set the team up for success as well. Perfect. 
I will pass that on to the guys. It's much appreciated. Yeah. Right, moving on to the next one. We have from John. I've noticed that throughout the game, I talk a lot about my strategy every turn to myself. Processes, order of operations, who needs to shoot, action, score, shoot, score, action, shoot, or fight. Well, that's let me remember what I have to do and when I have to do it. I worry about giving my opponent too much info on my plans and lets them find a way to stop it. How do you guys plan turns out, especially when the game evolves past your usual slash initial game plan? I'm pretty talkative. I don't try and hide almost anything. And if the other person can figure it out, fucking congrats, dude. Good job. Like, there are not a lot of like reactive strats and things like that that are like really likely. Like, if your plan involves around your opponent not realizing they should overwatch or not yeah. realizing they should fight first, like, you know, that's. Probably not a great spot. Probably not to a be great in. plan. Like you're yeah. definitely relying on your opponent making a mistake. Now, in that situation, do you have to give your opponent the information that this is the only way you have to get on that objective? No, probably not. So maybe bring a notepad, jot notes down instead of saying it out loud or something like that for the stuff that's like really important. But it's don't rely on tricking your opponent or your opponent like misunderstanding like their context on something because you're going to be doing have a much better like development by just doing things the right way and learning to play around your opponent's abilities and interaction rather than hoping they don't use it. Now yeah. you're going to also, you're going to have different evaluations of what is good and what is bad in a given situation to your opponent. They might be valuing that CP very importantly, and you might for some reason convince them to use it here where it actually would have been better spent somewhere else or things like that. So don't worry too much about giving up information because if it helps you play the game better, just play the game better and worry about your opponent later. Um, especially if it's going to help you with the communicated intent stuff of, you know, making sure your models are where they need to be, where you said they were, and, you know, on an objective, off an objective, behind a wall, not behind a wall, as you need it to be. And the more that you're communicating with that, your opponent, the generally better they are reciprocating that. People tend to give back what you put in, in terms of communication. So yeah. don't worry about it. You're, you're going to be a better player if you just do your thing and let your opponent figure it out. Um, it's a very much... Uh, the Sean Nadine game plan, right? If you're in a bad matchup, just shove your stuff and make them figure it out. Yep. Um, so, you know, man, that just, shit works way more than often than it should. Just trust yourself, man. You'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Adam Thylacine asks Talons or Shield Host? Shield Host is the WA. Shield Host is WA. Talons is Phantasm. Uh, Talons is just like, I would like to have good stratagems, please, God. Uh, Shield Host has a much more interesting once per game ability, but lining it up so that you actually get to use it's going to be tough. Yeah. I personally, I like the idea of Shield Host more. I think it has some interesting stratagems. Um, the, like, the big Alara squad with um, Ignore's Cover or potentially Sustained Hits is, like, an actually relevant shooting threat in an army that doesn't really have one. If you combine that with, like, Kyria, you suddenly actually have a pretty relevant shooting phase into a lot of armies. Is that going to come together? Maybe not, but... The plus AP and the crit fives does mean that like you do have a fairly relevant golden water, and I think that that might be better. And just using your strat, using your stratagems on just like hitting command reroll and rapid ingressing things, you know, yeah. play like double venatory, real, real play plays. warhammer hours. Yeah, exactly. Just play the warhammer that it says on the tin and go and hit your opponent, and you will probably like I could see that being a fifty percent winner army. Like it does not yeah. seem like it would be hard for it. To do. I think there's a lot of armies that are genuinely not prepared to get venatoried. I deployed that army on TTS the other day and was like, yo, that's a lot of rapid ingress all at the same time. Yeah, you're just like, ingress, 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 ingress. Good luck. Yeah, um, just... <laughs> and like, Caladiuses didn't get worse. Like, that detachment changed basically not at all for them. If they yeah. were getting dev wounded to death, you were doing something wrong. Or playing that. That was the yeah. sons and the death, that wouldn't have helped you. So, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it so much. Just play the good data sheets. Uh, how long until someone stops their whinging long enough to win a new GT with the Custodes book? Week one. Yeah, I would definitely expect it within like the month of May. Um, I would yeah, be very dude. It's going to be early as fuck, and it's going to be embarrassing for their Reddit. Yeah. Somebody's <laughs> just going to clown a GT with them. The book is worse. Please don't get me wrong, but that book yeah. is messed up. The fact that it is worse is not a relevant indicator. We yeah. also don't know where the points are going to land. Don't read too much into what's in the book. The book I... points are definitely like released in the 10th edition they will not be that expensive yeah also like there's a very real world here where we get ninth custodied again where the book drops isn't good or rather it dropped and was great in ninth but like if it drops and it's not good and they buff it too much 
where you're we're just straight back into custody hell. If you make a custodian 35 points, that book is fucking broken. So let's see. Also, Trajan is still phenomenal. Chill out. Are <laughs> like people saying Trajan's work. bad? People are saying Trajan's bad. And like, okay, guys, bad is a lot. That is a lot for a 12 attack strength, 10 damage, 3 model. He's like a lot. But, He's also AP3 now. Is he? <laughs> well, with the... Oh, with the, with the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Trajan with crit 5s and AP3 is, like, from my nightmares. Uh, yeah. It's just like, no, I don't I don't, I don't, don't actually see your death company squad. It was, it's not there anymore. Uh, it's like getting charged by Canis, but he ingresses and deep strikes. Yeah. Uh, Okay, and the last one from Adam is how much feel no pain is too much feel no pain. Apparently, I, as much as Custodes had was dude, too much. Stop putting four up fucking feel no pains in the goddamn game. What the fuck? No data. She should have a four up feel no pain, and like like non situational four up feel no pains just shouldn't be on a data sheet. Like the wardens want nothing. One, it's stupid. No, no. I get it. No. Yeah, no. agreed. I don't think it should exist, but if it's going to, that's the kind of place that it can nope. be okay. But otherwise, like, five up should be the limit, man. No, five up should be the limit. Period. End of sentence. You can have a four up if you don't have a save and cannot get one. That's it. So, like, aberrants, is, ab aberrants get one with their five up armor save, and Arc no. maybe. <laughs> if they Aberrants can have one if their save goes to a six up. Fuck them. <laughs> like, no! <laughs> How do you feel about the Sisters of Silence and uh, Flesh Hounds 3 up film opinion against psychic attacks? Whatever, that's fine. It's just psychic. It's like against one type of attack. I can live with that. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. How cool are orcs? How boring are orcs? Are we about to see a Wapocalypse? I mean, orcs are really cool. Very points pending, right? Orcs are really cool. Like, there's a lot of um, like combos in there that look really good there's a lot of like detachments like let you enable you to use a lot of units that we're not using right now i think that people are getting real doomer that don't play 40k that just play the math hammer app in their phone um because the drop tanks and all that shit look terrifying if all you do is like plug it into the app and you're like oh, i killed you Steam cover almost doesn't exist at all so um what'd you say and cover doesn't exist and well just like no one uses defensive strats. And... It, I, dude, no one hides from your 10 inch moving 88 square inch unit footprint. Like, what are we doing? Like, it's, it's never been tagged ever. Yeah, it's like, never going to activate. Like, there's a lot of problems with that build. I salute anyone willing to go out and buy the 24 or whatever the fuck it is. If you play 24 drop tanks and 18 kilocans, like. Yeah, I dude. hope you're going to all the Depticon. <laughs> yeah. And, like, even there, you're probably going to have a pretty bad day. Like, it's just... Squig Brig is coming. Yeah, Squig Brig, I am genuinely... Like, I am a lot more scared of Squig, of Squig Dog Jail than I am of Killicans and uh, Grotto Tanks. Dude, I played against it. Like, it's not... It's worse Wolf Jail. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, didn't, say I, was, I didn't say I thought I was going to lose to it, but it's a lot scarier than Grot Tanks. Yeah, I was going to... Oh, yeah, sure. I, like, I was going to say, like, I think that detachment has a lot of legs. I don't think it's in the, like... Because, like, the think about it for more than, like, literally a second. So you go first, right? Do you ah? And it's like, well, no, because fucking what? <laughs> and if the minute that answer is no... You're not putting all the squigs in front of the enemy. What do we do now? Oh, we want I, I, I think it's a little sad that the, um, because that squad has the Warboss keyword, I think it's just better in Bully Boys. Because uh, it, it be. gets two wasp. But, like, yeah. I just, like, I am fairly confident that, like, the minute you think about it, and you're like, oh, yeah. Do I want getting in Volm? Or do I want for offense? Oh, neither? Oh, what am I doing? It's just not that good. Like, don't, like, calm down about that detachment. It's going to be okay. I think orcs are definitely, we're in the lurch where we just need to wait for points on them. If Mega Nobs stay at 30 points a model, they're going to be a very, very powerful DSG. If they go up a bit, they're going to be very good. And if they go up, like, 10 points a model, they're probably not going to be, like, they'll be, they'll be competent, but not terrifying. And the same thing applies to, like, you know, if Gaz stays at 
was like 260 at the moment. I think he's a reasonable at 260 for us. I think he's I reasonable at 260 as well. But if he goes up, if he goes down, like there's a yeah, lot of yeah, it's very easy to not take him. Um, yeah, I think orcs have like a ton of build diversity options. Like there's a lot of things you can do with orcs, and a lot of things that are enabled by the detachments that were bad before. But they're not like this like game ending fucking blah threat. Like at the end of the day. Outside of Bully Boys, they are a one-turn fast faction that does not shoot, other than one detachment. Oh, yeah, they, like, just don't shoot as well now. Like, there's no, like, oh, they have flash gets and fucking bad red. That's gone. So, like, yeah, it's different. Things are different now. Yeah, it's... We're going to see good orc players work some goddamn magic with that book. Um... Oh yeah, some people and, are going to get fucking clowned. Like, the book is really strong, don't get me wrong. Like, and if you're really good at orcs already, woo, lad, your day just got really exciting. Well, nothing but, that I read made me look at it and go, oh man, this is Canoptic Court and Hypercrypt. Yeah, there's also just no, like, like, if you're not already good at orcs, you're going to be great at this. That's not, that's not a thing. Yeah, like, there is a world where the shooting detachment just, like, pans out in the meta, well enough after the changes that it just shoots some people to death and wins some tournaments that way what that like is you know old freebooter yeah. style but i don't think that's going to be common and yeah. i think that will be the exception rather than the norm unless the points are just wild yeah i would be again just shocked like if that was how this shook out yeah. um, also I, that list will just event occasionally one shot itself in its own shooting phase and that's yeah. just funny so yeah all right Instead of the standard data slate wish list, what's everyone's wish list for the Leviathan pack changes, assuming we get updated missions and secondaries this summer? I don't, I am terrible at this. Every time, like, uh, I can't wish list a mission pack. Like, I get the mission pack and then I decide how I'm going to deal with it, is basically how I interact with these. Because, like, I don't know what I would change. I know that I don't like what we have now <laughs> at all. I hate that there's all these theoretical missions and, like, we really can play three of them. Otherwise, we're playing Nonsense Hammer. I would like that shit to stop. Um, but, you know, it's tough. It's hard to make good missions. I really liked what we had at the end of the ninth. But, you know, we're past that point. That shit's gone. I, so. I would, so going for mine, I would probably like to see secondary categorization come back where there's like two different types of fixed secondary and you can pick one from each rather than being able to do things like Klein's Homers or Assassination and Bring It Down because I think we stifle build diversity a little bit and give too many like safe non-interactive armies an option that probably shouldn't exist uh, and give you know armies like demons and things like that where you're playing like big boys that are vehicles and creatures knights for example for another reason if you wanted to play like big stuff making those lists a little sad I think it would be cool to Give them a little more build diversity. I think a couple of the tactical cards could use a little bit of a tune up. Things like um things like capture any outpost and behind enemy lines being scorable turn one, probably a mistake. Some of them are just you know could use the like scoring increments change. But broadly, like I don't hate the current mission format. Like I think it needs tweaks. I don't I, I would I would dislike seeing it be completely thrown out with the bathwater and us have to relearn a new thing a year into the edition, knowing that we're like just having to not even having to relearn, but having to rediscover what the game looks like under a completely different set of circumstances. I think if we see a year of tweaks and then, you know, another year and then we get another year of that and then we have like, you know, a WC and then a WTC on the changes and it's fine and we see what happens and then the new edition comes out in two years time or three years time or whatever it is and like we've at least had some level of stability we're not just getting like arcs of omen midway through the edition that just throws everything into chaos. I think that would be much better for the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, things like bring it down to units, not models, I think makes total sense. I think um, it's fine. Fuck I think it's fine, but I also think like you could change it if you wanted to encourage more of the small vehicle things. I think with Tau changing, it kind of doesn't matter that much. Okay. It's mostly just things like Paragon War Suits and Grot Tanks and things like that that get super punished. But also, like I don't really care. Like It's one of the things that, yeah, it could change, but if it didn't change, I don't think it would like massively impact the game. It's a feels-good change. Rather yeah. than a Small asterisk. Change. If they give a Mortifier engine or a Penitent engine equivalent to world leaders, I think it should go to units. But aside from that, I... <laughs> I when, you get your jug, when you get your Jogger Cav and they're all, uh, they're all vehicles... Why would they be vehicles? I don't know. <laughs> they would be mounted, surely, which is much worse. We change Angron to vehicle keyword. Uh, just for the no! Give him tank shock. That fair enough. That would be pretty fucked up a lot of the time, actually. 
<laughs> All right. Oh, you're good against conventional damage? Bam! <laughs> Okay, not really a question, but I have to say something mean about the Gladiator Lancer, and you have to say something nice about it. Okay, that's not hard for me to do. Rolling twos into twos fucking sucks, and it is a wildly inconsistent vehicle that does um, when you are just relying on its main gun. However, it is, and I'm not going to do the nice bit because that's not my job right now. It is wildly inconsistent, and you should not rely on it as your primary source of vehicle damage. Um, I think it does a good job of convincing opponents who are worse than you that you have a phase that you don't. That's not a compliment, Anthony. That's just you being backhanded. What do you mean? That was a compliment. It does a good no, it thing. it doesn't. <laughs> Why are you like this? Answer the question properly. Um, I think that against things without an invuln, it can do a whole bunch of damage. <laughs> uh, Does that count? Says, what nice things can we get? I'm, I'm moving on. Uh, what nice things can we get the crew to say? Anthony, say something nice about current shield host design before it's gone. Um, Blade Champs are really cool. What's that got to do with Shield Host? There it got worse in the book. Yeah, but he's asking about the Shield Host detachment. Oh, the deta Slayers and Nightmares is really cool. <laughs> okay. What are the odds orcs get a pre release nerf? It seems even casual players are noticing things in the codex. Guys, this is not release Volcan and Necrons. We do not need pre-release nerfs there is nothing that seems like chill your role wait for the points yeah we're super the not world, there yet <laughs> the world can wait two weeks to know what the points are in this book before we start freaking out if mega knobs are 12 points a model you can start freaking out until then chill your jets the world is not falling apart katan didn't get a five of film of pain and not changing points or rates get an extra wound and stay the same cost and, and get, access and, to a film of pain yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um <laughs> Like they changed. The the, the, the Mega Dobbs issue is probably better now. The Feel No Pain is better than Dev Wounds, but it is not strictly an upgrade. It is definitely, in some sense, it's a diagonally upward side grade, potentially. It's maybe a downgrade. Depends on context. I think it's Children. largely an upgrade. I think it's largely an upgrade as well, but I could see an argument, but it definitely lowered their damage output. And that is sure. a, like that didn't happen to Wraiths, right? So, yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's a long question. With the dropping of Orcs and Custodes, teasing of the CSM and early release codex for Tau, what's the timeline for Sisters and GSC? I hope they're both in for WTC. Probably summer. Uh, I hope that Sisters... I mean, I hope they're not in for WTC, but... <laughs> that's just me being I... a hating ass hater. <laughs> what's one thing you think GW would absolutely mess up in each of those books? Oh man, so much of GSC is going to go wrong. That's why I don't want them in for WTC. Like, there's no way GW gets that right, right? Like, they've no, literally no. the entire time that I've played 40k, and this is me as like a, you know, fairly newer player, they've been S or F tier. They have yeah, either no, they, been. That's true for the entire. GW have never gotten GW to GSC yeah. to then, right? Yeah, it's, it's rough. I, it's, I would uh... say the closest GW have ever gotten to getting GSC's design right was the seventh edition launch, which is where they rolled on a random table to determine if they came on from like the board edge, the side of the board behind your de your deployment zone edge, or like popped up a deep strike and got closer to you. And it was like, you know, they were actually ambushing you and yeah. then they could all hyper crypt off the board every turn. And they got models back and they recycled models when they went off. It was wildly overpowered, but it also felt like they were coming out of the jungle at you, um, which is like the most thematic they've got. It was yeah. wildly broken. There has never been a time that they have made that book feel both thematically like it's guerrilla dudes ambushing you and like like a people's uprising. Like you're essentially getting Bolshevik revolution when you lose to GOC, right? Yeah. Um, and it never really feels like that. It often just feels like guardsmen with funny hats shooting you or yeah. getting yeah. charged by aberrants. And like none of those are really the GSC design like thematically. And I think the current book is a failure of that. The blip mechanic was so wildly broken, but also the book is so hostile to melee that there's just not like it doesn't fill the role particularly well. Um, so I think there's I could see that book being a fundamental like ground up rewrite of GSC again and re returns almost none of the mechanics from the current book. So yeah. there is so much thing wrong. Uh sisters Sisters need a fundamental change to fucking miracle dice, dude. I am so tired of Sisters Turn 2 being the same as Eldar start of game at beginning of edition. Holy shit, what are we doing? Like <laughs> Sisters are probably going to get a melee detachment that is just wild that will be too good at having Miracle Dice Generation because of the core mechanics, and we'll just punch people in the face too hard. Um, and we'll be too reliable at making combat. 
Yeah. I think that's the thing that's most likely to go wrong. Or they just print a wild attachment that for Archoflagellants, um, even more so than the current one. Or like suffering and sacrifices in every detachment for some reason or something like that. Ah, no. <laughs> There's a lot that could go wrong. Um, this is a stats question, so I'm going to leave it off, Gregs. But if you ask that again next week, um, chuck it back in for Jeremy and Nathan. Uh, I got into the game of Marines, and although I really like them, I decided to start Custodes in order to take a break from the subscription model. We all know what happened to them. I am now thinking of trying Chaos Knights or Votan. Given the chance they also get a Custodes or Ad Admech type of codex, should I just stick with Marines for now? I don't think there's a good answer for this because it's almost always going to depend on what you're looking to get out of it. If you are looking for an army that is almost always going to be good in some context and are willing to adapt, Space Marines will leave you with 600 points of an army every time the meta changes. Chaos Knights or Votan might leave you with nothing. So the subscription service, yes, is great, but it also gives you a head start on changes and adaptation where if your Chaos Knights or Votan are unplayable, you're just waiting for the next time they're good. So... What are you looking to get out of the new army? Are you looking for another army to cycle around with custodies? Or are you looking for a thing that you can always fall back on while you build out the rest of your collection? I think you just have to make that decision for yourself. Um, right now, if you were to buy into a Marines army like Blood Angels and Blood Angels get a book and it's not great, you will at least have some units towards your Black Templars or your Ultramarines or something. Whereas if you, you know, you buy Chaos and you buy into Chaos Knights or Votan and they get their new book and it's terrible, you will have nothing towards the other one. So it's down to you more than anything else. I think I would probably just be looking at picking up Chaos Knights. We haven't heard anything about them getting a book soon. The current play style is quite good and very consistent, especially if you're newer and looking to improve. They play in all the phases. They give you lots of resources to work with. They're weirdly one of the most MSU'd armies in the game. <laughs> they have like literally 12 individual threats and almost no army has that, at least in my experience. Um, like they're great. They get your foot in the door into the Chaos Super Faction if you want to explore that later. You get some demon allies, a lot to work with. That would be my foot, my you recommendation going forward. Um, also, like, magnetize a Chaos Knight army and have it play as Imperial Knights as well, which gives you a little bit more resilience. So it's definitely one of the armies that's a little yeah. more flexible in that sense, that you will have some level of cross between, and if you build your models so that you can swap them between, like, claw and chain and, like, gun, you can play them as, like, armigers or war dogs and things like that. So... It's definitely a place to look. Yep. Okay. Um, that's a question for Jeremy about common pitfalls that TOs make. The second one is, has the team reviewed FLG's new static layouts and what do you think of them if you have? I haven't looked at them at all. Have you had a look at any of the FLG stuff? Uh, yeah. They're pretty cool, actually. Um, I think that they are earnestly trying, which is really dope. Because I think it would be really easy from their position not to. Um, and I think that that deserves a, like, you know. Hey, that deserves an attaboy? Yeah, like a non zero amount of praise, right? Because um, I think that they're, like, you know, they're doing the things that, like, we complain at them for not doing, right? They're, like, taking mm -hmm. on criticisms, implementing feedback, and doing a really great job. Um, since they got a, uh, Jake on the team, he's been like there's been a lot of like broadly really great changes in the work that him and kicker are doing deserves nothing short of like praise um there's dope there's dope stuff coming like the stuff in the queue for like champs cup when that comes out the stuff that they're doing for fixed layouts bao is going to be all like gw adjacent terrain like it's going to be they're making legitimate changes which is good in a world where they're the largest event provider in the united states yeah it has me to the point where i'm like considering doing lvo again next year because yeah. I would like to do Vegas again. And you, should do, you should do you should do ACO instead. But yes, also an option. Yeah, it's just well, like I would. Fun. I like the idea of doing a front an event with a bunch of friends from the states again. Right. Yep. Almost purely based on the fact that they are doing the things that I was complaining about. Now, if they let me into the event hall on the Friday for or the Thursday for a practice game, that'd be the best. If they, um, yeah, and then tell you to go fuck yourself right afterwards. Yeah, something like that. Um, okay. Uh, are we worried about orcs? How much points did I run the brokenness here? Are we going for sure the issue was most adorts? I think we've just spoken about we've spoken about that one enough. But I just, I just don't think they're gonna like they're definitely really strong. They might even be too good. I it's an army with no guns. Yeah. Like cross that bridge when we get there is basically like how I feel. Yep, I'm with you on that one. I will until I have seen it be busted, I will like just 
trust the process a little bit, I think. Right. Um, and I don't think there's really another way to, you know, kind of lean into that right now besides just being like, come on, guys, it'll be fine. There is no way. I mean, I don't know that it's going to be fine. It might be fucking wild, right? Like, I don't want to be the person that was like, oh, this is what everything is fine. But, like, also, like, you know, it's a combat army with no guns. Like, there's an upper limit to how crazy it can get. If anything, of all this time playing world leaders and watching other people play world leaders has shown me, you know, it's a little harder to play melee stuff than this gun stuff sometimes. That doesn't sound right. Would you ever play a format that allowed you to change lists per for, per per opponent? Something like God, 2, no. points plus a five point sideboard, the ability to change attachments and enchantments. We had the ability to change attachments and enchantments in eighth edition, and it went away, and everybody complained about it, and I've not heard anybody complain about it since. So nope. besides like exactly the week that it went away, where people were really mad. Um I don't it's a cool idea, it's not built for the game that we play. Yeah, it doesn't work for this thing that we're doing. The way that we Warhammer is not the way that allows that to be a thing. Yep. Um, I think that's kind of the long and short of my thoughts on it. Um, from Frank, what attachments you most excited to play around with? Uh, none, I won't be playing Orcs. But um, Bully Boys definitely looks like the most fun to me. It's the one that I'm the most like curious about, like agnostically as wanting to see how well it performs. I think it's the one that I like the most enjoy the idea of. How about yourself? Um, War Tribe, actually. Um, Which is just the kind of generic one, right? The standard book. Yep. Just the one we had from the book. I think that's going to be really hype. And I'm looking forward to trying it with some new data sheet buffs. A combination of that and bullies. I like the straightforward shit. Like, I mean, if you're, you know, have not watched the show much before, I tend to be like, that thing is something that I can play for 100 games. Let's do that. Yeah, Anthony. Anthony likes to. Anthony is the opposite of a snowflake. It's very true. Well, other than it was army choice, but with his list. Yeah, once a man. <laughs> okay. uh, how do you think some of the changes to some of the most frequently seen units, like no bad rock, the swickle characters, and the script objective boys will impact list building in the new book? No idea until we see points, man. I truly, we, it's really hard to judge. But losing bad rock very heavily impacts the amount of the that army's ability to play out of phase. It is just a combat army now. You can get some more wound output outside of phase with things like um, Squig Bombs and the Charge Mortals and Squig Boys. Um, but really, that's it. Um, Skicking Objective Boys gives the army a bit more ability to play forward pressure, but you're probably going to be leaving Gretchen on your objective anyway. Or even if you leave some boys in the back, you like think about it. But yeah. Exactly. Sticky's like, I don't think good. It's impact that much. Yeah. Sticky's really good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But. Sticky in an army that wants to stay on its objectives for CP generation anyway with Grots is a little bit worse than it is in yeah, some other armies. Um, and the Squid Hogs running the characters gives you really big units. How many top ranked ITC players should GW have reached out to help for writing custodies rules? As many as they did. And exactly, they reached out to exactly the right number. Yeah. Uh, and what would be our favorite way to eat a squig egg? Uh, not at all. I'm pretty sure they're with, mushrooms, and I'm not a big fan of mushrooms. With a flamer. That works too. Um, what's more satisfying? GW finally acknowledging female custodies or watching the tears of the weirdo gatekeeper incels? Um, oh, Twitter's man. been unusable for like two days. So watching the tears was like funny for 20 minutes and now I'm just now I'm just sad for them. Um, but the female custodian thing is cool. The, you know, the modeling opportunities already existed, but now they're codified and people can do it and like not get shouted at by people who are really weird, which I'm all for, you know. Let people do the cool things with their models. I'm I definitely, can't. I'm definitely pro weep about the changes, you fucking morons! Holy I moly, is it not imagine big... being yeah. the kind of person who has the emotional bandwidth to be upset about female custodes? That's yep. the thing that just like I don't. What is going on in your life that that's the thing that you have time to be worried about? Um, just yeah, just eat just shit, don't... losers. Get owned. Exactly. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Um, Okay, aliens have invaded. You must beat them in three rounds of 40k. The war will explode. Your three opponents are Liam VSL clones. How will you save us? The Godspeed. Sorry. <laughs> what? What was the run that so, by one time? Aliens, aliens have invaded, invaded, and you must beat them in three rounds of 40k, or the world will explode. Your three opponents are Liam VSL clones. How will you save us? Oh, dude, that's easy. So there's a very particular set of circumstances that make Liam as powerful as he is. And if the aliens make any mistakes in the cloning process, 
We got this. He's very defeatable. Yeah, he's not tall enough. He not was tall enough. enough not too drunk tall? enough. Too tall. Not too sober. Yeah, like he might keel over and just like break the table. You uh-huh. know, they might not know to put him on thousand suns. They might put him on like I, I I don't have an answer for that. But if anybody figures it out, that'd be great. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No. Um. Just play if you can. Do you get to pick like the time frame? Because I'll play um old nids into into old harlequins every day of the week. If like, you let me have three malice yeah. and it won't be like you know. You you're not putting enough criteria on this. Um, Liam so can do it. games occasionally. Yeah. And in this, what would be your orc job? Weird boy, mech, no, mega knob, etc. Uh, I would like to be one of like the squigs that carries the bombs around. Like I could live that life. Ennis is a mech. No, I'm not. Techn- I'm, I'm not technologically talented enough for that. And I get that that's not like a thing with orcs, but even then, yeah, that's not how that works. Bad. So that doesn't matter. You'd it be would fine. still be bad. Um. Can we sell the Lancer versus Bob Hunter bait debate once and for all? No, it's personal preference. Grow up. Also, Anthony, like Fem Stories or Drakari Witch. Uh Drakari Witch, not close. Um, the 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 ball predator thing is like the ball predators aren't like insane. Like I'm not here like bro, ball predators change life. It's just like a pretty undercosted tank. Ball predators are good. I like ball predators. I just don't feel like I you need them in that detachment. The yeah. answer might be that you don't need any shooting. You should just play more Vanguard veterans. I, but, yeah. I do you have know, that list written too. Who cares? Yeah. Just play the thing that brings you joy and is working for you and don't worry so much about what other people are doing. If you can't decide between them, pick the one that vibes for you. But, you know, the things that work for me and the things that work for Anthony are going to work for our different approaches to different problems and our level of risk tolerance. Go with the thing that speaks to you rather than the thing that we are saying is good. Yeah. Because there, there's enough wiggle room between a 95% list and a 95% list with a different tank that who gives a shit? Um, what is a fair and balanced points cost for a mega knob? Somewhere between zero and thirty-five. Uh, I would 70. say with the four up feel no pain. If you're pointing them with the existence of the bully boys detachment, right? Like you have to include that because GW doesn't think about these things Want when they to? write rules. Yep. Um, that you probably have to cost them at like forty. Um, and if you're just pricing them agnostic to that, probably thirty-five. And I think yeah, you're good. They're thirty right now. But the field of pain is an upgrade on the dev wounds, so like I think thirty five is probably worth. I think thirty five is fine. I was guessing, and forty they would be playable, but all, probably only really in bully boys. Um, but that's what I'm saying, though. That's, that's like if you're assuming that you know people are going to play the. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to show people are going to play the good detachment or one of the good detachments, right? I'm excited as in is for orcs. I am genuinely happy that orc players will get a cool thing that they get to play with. However. The idea of a detachment that allows people to shout "wah" twice at a tournament fills me with existential dread. Um, I can't. I, I simply can't do it. I will probably um, red card anybody who was at a tournament that I'm at that I'm running because I simply red do not card. Fuck with that. Yeah, no, you're out. You're just gone. Red if you're playing bully boys and you wah the first time, I'm red carding you before you can wah for a second turn. I think that's just fair to everybody, right? Rough. Nobody should have to deal with 10 walls per tournament. Yeah, that's tough. Mm-hmm. It's a tough life out here. You know, people gotta people gotta play the cards they're dealt. Okay. How do weird lists like the 12 Irish obliterator CSM affect team event prep? To take that one specific example, did you do any reps in that list? To blah, blah, blah to try and figure out its job in the run-up to home nations. Um, weird lists are basically always a thing that you are just going to have to accept the existence of and work around. You will never predict everything that every team thinks can or something. You just have to work with what the information that you have and try your best. I think um, the easiest way to handle it for something like WTC specifically is if you see something super weird in your pod, you should fill out a matrix and anyone who says they're positive into it should have to play it. Yeah, that's a very fair approach. Just people are almost always too optimistic um in basically every situation when it comes to matrixing especially with lists they've not seen you are probably going to understand that list less well than the person who's playing it so you should default to i this list is interesting and i don't understand it rather than this list is you know this list is bad because they are playing it for a reason they think it is good into some matchup you do not know what that is it is your job to figure it out or to not underestimate it and go into it cold sometimes the list just crap and sometimes you're wrong, and somebody shows up with a Land Raider Redeemer and some Deathwing Terminators, um, and nobody was expecting it. 
Sometimes you get gut. Exactly. Cal asks Innes and Anthony, what is your favorite smell and why is it up, dog? Um, <laughs> Hell yeah, Cal. <laughs> um, personally, I am more of a fan of Bofa. Uh, rather than Updog, but yeah. each their own. Um, Nick asks, what role do you think orcs will have in teams? Um, how long is a piece of string? They're going to have a bunch of different ones. Do you want like traditional, do you want a jail list? Do you want a list that you can try to force onto open side objections and shoot people to death? Do you want a list that just stands behind walls and says, do you want to walk at the primary or get charged by mega knobs? Or do you want to sit in your deployment zone and let me score 100? Um, there will be lots of different rules that you can take in that, and it will very much depend on what your player likes, what the meta demands, and what the points look like. But it seems like there will probably be a very good stand in the midfield and score my tens list with something like, you know, 120 Gretchen. That's going to be a bitch. Why are they still OC two, Anthony? Am I allowed to be mad at that? You can be a little mad about it. I'm a little mad at it. I'm, a, I'm more than a little mad at it. It's actually the thing I'm the most mad at in that book, including the Vorpfield bit on Mega Knobs. Really? Like, the fuck, they're still OC two. Uh, it just. They're not battle line. They shouldn't be OC2. Um, Harlequins aren't OC2. <laughs> Our draw's better holding objectives than Harlequin troops. Um, well, fuck them, that's why. <laughs> that's true, but also <laughs> not happy. Um, there will probably be some very aggressive, I'm going to run at you, Brian Sipe style lists. And I'm sure Brian Sipe on the Take All Comers episode where they went through the Orcs Codex that came out on Saturday will have He wasn't on, by the way. He couldn't make oh, that. Was he not? No. They said he was on in the preview stuff, and I didn't watch the show. Okay, scammed, ridiculous, Brian. You suck. Uh, I hope you don't make Team America now. Uh, whoa, Sam. But whoa, <laughs> what are the three current best singles builds? Oh, uh, your Sons pairings of path. Sons your... of Sanguinius. Oh, we took different um, approaches. No, no, no. Sons of Sanguinius, Necron, Canoptic Core, and. Probably custodies right now, like right no. now today. No, maybe guards have so many pins. Probably guard actually. Yeah, or if you're one of exactly four people, none of which are playing singles T-Suns. right now, T Suns. Yeah, but T Suns like T Suns is like hard sad into guard and uh, some El- and a lot of elder builds, which does make it hard to justify. You can play the game into both of those, I think. You can play the game, but it is hard, and you have like you have to be one of those four guys, right? So yeah, um, yeah, I think it's yeah, it's some combination of. Sons of Sanguinius, potentially, like, black, I, I could also see, like, um, some form of Black Templar's build being arguable as being up there. Um, and then, yeah, Thousand Suns, um, Guard, and Necrons, Canoptic Core, and also probably Hyper Crypt. Like, those are probably, like, the top four or five builds. Yeah, uh, can you blank yeah. saves from Dev Wounds, or if the AP was high enough to grant you no save? From Dev Wounds, no, because you do not take a save, you just suffer mortal wounds. If the AP was high enough to not grant you a save, you still technically roll it, you just fail yeah, it. and blank it after control which you can then blank because you would still make a saving throw, even though you would automatically fail it. It's the same reason that something like, um, if you have a model with like a 7-up save, like Arcoflagellants, if you shoot them, they still technically get to throw a save. They just would never pass it. So most people shortcut that step. Um, the number of times that I've looked at my opponent dead in the face after they've rolled, a, they've rolled their armor save on an Arcoflagellant, and they roll a 4, and they like, pass, I'm like, no, buddy, you're in cover. That was your 6-up armor save. Roll yeah. Your field yeah, try again. You, you don't get to bypass yeah <laughs> um very sad what should be my goal going into a tournament x amount of wins or points scored probably not either don't do that <laughs> if you are a person who is very goal oriented going with the aim of i would like to try and win x number of games is a okay way to do things that is suboptimal and will hurt your growth but it is i get it i get setting the this is the thing that i would like to achieve your goal should be to win every game that you, is to try and win every game you play and to try to like make it as small a loss as you can or to like try something and try to find like try to find a winning line in your losing games that you're comfortable with even if it doesn't work aim to be competitive in every game you play and to win as many of them as you can um and to enjoy yourself more than anything else like your goal should be to have a good time playing every game win or lose um if you're not enjoying games that you lose at playing warhammer you're probably going to like bounce off the game a little bit because you're going to lose you know, on average, half the games you play, once you start getting up to the level of playing, people are just as good as you. Um, so, you know, find comfort in the losses. Enjoy your enjoy the games you play. Otherwise, you'll not have fun with Warhammer if you're going to keep playing tournaments. It's going to get ugly fast. Yeah. 
Uh, Jack, uh, Jack asks, how is my other army coming out? Dan, I'm so sorry, man. I have, it's so cold in Scotland, and my hobby space is in the garage. So I, between the months of conservatively September to May, don't hobby unless it's for a tournament. <laughs> Because it's too cold outside, I I just can't do it. So like, give me like two weeks, and I'll probably start build. I'll probably start building and painting some models for WTC, and then after WTC, I'll have like a one month stretch of getting to do all the hobby I want to do for the year. Um, that go. isn't exactly for a tournament list. Um, so not great, my dude. I'm sorry. Uh, Ben asks EC tattoo when. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Ben. If I take them to WTC and we win. That's fair. If you take the WC and win, you get one and Ben gets one? No, Ben can be safe for a little bit. He That's doesn't. Fair. Ben doesn't deserve that. Ben is wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And Larry asks, ideal four-man teams line up. Uh... Four mans is such a weird team number. Well, it's like you it's like don't get to do cool pairings. You basically you look at your four by four matrix and you pick the one matchup that you don't want to happen, and you get to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's kind of it. It's it's um, also weird because it's like, you know, scrum pair only. Yeah, it's just Good luck. Scrum pair and you're yeah. like, you have no pre preparation. You just load in. I hope your list doesn't have two pins. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I would probably end up with something in the region of Blood Angels, Canoptic Core, like an aggro army of some kind, and Thousand Sons. It's um, a reasonable lineup. And the aggro army could be like range of things from like, right now you could play Orcs, you could play an aggressive guard build, you could play World Eaters, you could justify Grey Knights. Like there's loads of things that can go in that space. But I think Thousand Sons, Sons, and court would be like my all-stars okay tyler asks do you think this codex is going to decrease our 52.83 percent win rate how do you think casual players running double stompers will be able to keep it even they're going to increase the win rate because they're going to bully their way to three and two dude it is real easy to accidentally just press the button on some stompers to en route to enemy army being gone i genuinely like I could see myself losing to triple stompa with like a lot of lists that I play because it's just not a thing I'll account for or double yeah. stompa. It's just not a thing I'll account for in list building. And like the chance that I get run over by it is non-zero. Yeah. Uh, it definitely happened to me with Knights when I was playing the Death Watch list because it was just a list that was really good into certain things and not that. And not um, one of those. Yeah. Exactly. And it was just like, oops, fucked it. Um, yeah. Oh no, so, I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah, Tom says, I was kidding, but LMAO, you're probably right. We're, yeah, it's it's a curse. We're sorry for being right. Uh, I hate to be right about orc things. Uh, it is the worst of all the things to be right about. For no, you. I think it'll be, uh, yeah, no, it sucks. I hate orcs, uh, as we all know. Um, certified. Certi I'm a certified orc hater, and I refuse to, I refuse to apologize for that fact. Yeah. Uh, Double Stompa probably actually wins games, rest in peace. Yeah, I, it's really upsetting. I really don't like it. What happened? The, the, the fact that Double Stompa probably actually wins games. Oh, yeah, dude, that's real. Yeah, that's the, the double the guy with um the Gretchen that were like tiny little 3D printed Stompas at WC last year, the singles, is going to have the best time this year. I hope yep. he wins the <laughs> Cool. I think... Uh, my local player is a stomp a nuclear family. We are so fucked. You'll be fine, Davos. You can definitely beat it. It's just if you don't account for it. But if you know there's going to be a double stomp player, you're just like, all right, man. So I bring any anti tank, right? Got it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> but just, you know, don't scam yourself for no reason. Right. I think that is the extent of the questions from the Discord. If anybody asked any specific questions, that we're going into um, Jeremy or Nathan for the stats, guys. Please next do keep week. a hold of them. Fire them back to us next week. Uh, we will, as I said, if the data slate is out in April, which it should be, the end of April is two weeks yesterday, or as of time of speaking, which is now Wednesday at quarter to one in the morning, which means that whatever happens, our next show should be after the data slate. There is almost no world where that is not the case, Please. which means that next week's episode should just be us talking about the data slate, the changes, or uh, should not be us talking about the display because it should be out the week after. So next week we'll be, we will aim to try and have a that show and coverage of the last few months of the, the last few months 
and go through it in a bit more depth, as well as the last couple of weeks specifically, so we know what we're doing into, as well as potentially some more wish listing. If we've seen um, a little more of like playtesting of the Orts and Custodes Codex, you might see a bit more there. But and then the week after that, we will probably end up having like a show the day of the points release, like whatever that day is, we will probably end up covering it. And also then more on top of that afterwards on the, like we'll probably do a live release show of reviewing it. And then the show immediately following it will be us giving our reactions and a little bit more in date and up-to-date stuff. Otherwise, please refer back to all of the previous plugs. I'm just not doing them again. They're in the description. They're earlier in the show. If you hate me, you'd make me do them again. But Anthony doesn't hate me like Nathan and Jeremy do. So we're going to end the show now. Thank you so much, everybody, for being with us for episode 87 of Stat Check. Wah, Mr. Bond. I hope everybody has had a wonderful time. We will be back next week with your regular stats coverage. I have been Ennis. This has been Anthony. We don't have Nathan here to do the intro or the outro, so I'm just going to run the video, and everybody's going to have to be okay with that. Anthony, how's Pickles? Pickles is stellar. She's asleep. Some... Oh, right there. Right there, out of frame. You guys yep. don't get to see Pickles. You have not been good boys. Nope. Have Bad a wonderful chat. week. If you're upset about female custodies, please just go away. See you all next week. Bye.